Hi, this is Shana. Welcome to my channel. Today we have a timeless pick a card reading. Today we're going to find out what you need to know right now in your life. Um, today's lighting, it's not very perfect. I'm working on it, so just bear with me. Hopefully the next videos will have better lighting. Okay, so what do you need to know? at this moment in life. Um, to find this out, we have three possibilities. We have pile one here, represented by this beautiful stone, this fluorite. Then we have here Lemurian quartz. And then we have here, I think it's obsidian, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So take your time to choose your pile, in this case to choose a stone. Uh, you can pause the video if you like, and I will see you in a couple of moments. So if you chose this beautiful fluorite stone, this obelisk, right? Now, we're going to now see into what you need to know right now. So the first card we have for you, pile number one, is then the Three of Cups. Then we have the Five of Cups. The High Priestess. And Temperance. There you go. Now... The first message that I get here for you, pile number one, is to make the best of your situation. It's kind of like the cards are telling us you've been in a really down phase, like uh, when it comes to how you feel about yourself, how you feel about the world. And it's time for you to get up again. It's time for you to get into this three of cups situation. And it's actually the cards are inviting you to start seeing the cup half full instead of half uh, half empty, and um, and it's not very easy to do here with this five of cups. It's not easy to do because you may be stuck in the past. This could even be something deeper as like childhood trauma, and something that you probably don't even consciously control. Um, but the cards are actually asking you to take an active stance to do something about it um, before it gets into a depression because this is just uh, it's still just cups energy so it's actually um, the the situation is still not that difficult there's still a time to turn around so to say and I feel that that's what the cards are telling you you can turn the situation around right and but you still need some time. You know, it's like they're asking you to find the silver lining for you to see the positive side of what you're going through. Um, but it's like this is a time of healing here with the temperance and the high priestess. So this is not a time of big actions, of bold moves, of uh, changing your life completely. You may want to do so, especially because you're not satisfied with the certain situation in your life or situations and you want to change you want to come to this three of cups you you want to be happy you want to have fun you have you want to feel the light side of life but it's you know it's like here it's really beautiful here you know you want to get up in life you want to feel light-hearted you want to you know um, evade the situation you find yourself in be it just in your mind or be it really um a practical situation, a real, like, not real, all situations are real, but I mean, um, tangible situation, right? But it seems like something is holding you back, this giant here, see, it's like holding you back. And although, for instance, you have, some of you have like ideas about projects, new directions, 
uh, new things to do with your life, starting over, but it's like something is holding you back. And it could be just in your mind. It could be, like I was saying, an actual situation holding you back. And that's why then we have these two cards here telling you, you know, be patient. This is not a time for big, bold moves at this moment. It's time to go within. It's time to get in touch with your divine self. It's time to get in touch with your intuition. It's time also to get more information. And this is also time to heal. What I'm getting is also like uh, the cards are saying that uh, you probably, you are the kind of person that, you know, you just keep on moving. You just want to keep on moving. And usually it works out for you, you know, like um, you do a lot of stuff, you have many interests, you always move ahead, move ahead, move ahead. But there's something here that's telling us that you need some time for yourself, you need some time to heal, because these unhealed um, issues are holding you back. And this is really time to stop, take a look at it and heal it, right? And also, like I was saying earlier, in some situations, especially when you have new projects or you have like a new directions or you'd like to have a new direction in your life, then you have to gather information and you have to learn more about this new direction. You have to um, be better prepared, right? And, uh, and give yourself time to heal, give yourself time to prepare, give yourself time to be right? And to turn this um, state of being around. You need the time. And it's like, in here, I really like that the High Priestess has the, an open hand towards us. She's really saying, yeah, come with me. You can do this. You have it in you. So what you need to know is you can turn your situation around, but give yourself time and try, you know, to get in this positive mood in this positive vibe as much as you can but if you cannot force yourself to do that it's okay again just give yourself time you will get there this is where you belong you're actually pile number one a very positive person you're you're actually like the life of the party you're just finding yourself in a very like dark moment but it will pass this is also what the cards would like to tell you. If you find indeed yourself in this dark moment, it will pass. So let's continue. Then we have number 33, magic. Then we have 59, upper world. And then we have number two, Indian cross. So pile number one, you are pure magic. The cards would like to remind you that you are magic. You know, magic flows through you. Even if you don't, you know, have realized that yourself, but I think many who chose pile number one already know how magical they are. And uh, so, you know, you have this magic in you. It just may feel a bit stuck at the moment because you're not feeling too well, but... If you feel that, you know, this magic or this flow of magic is stuck or that you cannot connect with it in some way, then the cards are like advising you to get into childlike mentality, you know, that childlike uh, way of seeing the world full of wonder, full of joy, full of mischief as well, you know, like full of um, playfulness. So if, if you're feeling really down, it's because you lost like the spark of playfulness. But again, like I was telling you, you can turn it around. You can get in touch with that side of yourself again. And that's why we have the high priestess over there telling you, get in touch with yourself, with your divine self. And your inner child is divine. Never forget that. You know, it's a being that seen, sees wonder and magic everywhere. It must be divine. And then with the upper world, now here, this is the upper world, world is um, the world of the angels, the, uh, the, the, the high evolved beings, the light world, right? And this is actually your 
environment. And it's also telling you that you're very protected and you're guided. Now, you have, mm, I don't like to speak in have tos and musts and so on, but let's put it in another way. The, the cards are inviting you to get back in contact with the divine. Again, we have now two, three cards telling us this, get in contact with the divine. The divine will have answers for you. Your divine um, self will show you the direction, will show you the way, will inspire you, you know, to follow your true path. And will get you, will help you to get back to your magic in if the case is that you lost contact with it or you know you're just not feeling it. So if you get in contact with the divine, and this could be through prayer, this could be through meditation, whatever you prefer, but if you get in contact with a higher energy, then the your your path will be guided in a more natural way, in an easier way. And it will be easier for you to you know leave these depressive moments behind you. With the Indian cross, this is, of course, the, the gateway. And, um, and some of you will understand the gateway, you know, traveling through dimensions. Some of you, you are the magic and you can do this naturally even. But what also tells us is like with this gateway, this uh, in a more practical sense, is that we have uh, here some opportunities in life, you know. And it could be that you feel not so happy at the moment because you may feel that you just let an opportunity pass you by. And probably you think that, oh my God, that was the only opportunity, what have I done of my life, and so on. And that's not really true. There will be more opportunities coming your way. If it's really the case that, you know, you feel like you missed out on an opportunity, again, another one will come. But until that, that um, a new opportunity comes along, it's time to prepare. It's time to be, um, to wait, to be patient and to heal and to get into that positive vibe. Okay. And uh, because, and also again, get connected with your divine self, with your intuition, because when the next opportunity comes, you'll just feel it, you'll just know, and it won't, you know, it won't pass you by again. So there are new opportunities coming in. You are healing, you are getting out of this dark phase, and you're getting in touch with your magical, uh, divine, and sacred side. Okay. So there's like, again, just to, to, re to repeat is that this is not a moment of big actions. The only action or one of the actions that you can do is actually get in touch with your divine self. Okay, now let's continue. And then we have the muse and the king. So the muse says generosity and naivety. And then we have the king, control, reversal of fortune. So again, here we have like more or less the same message here. It's just try and have fun and celebrate. See the positive side of things. Get in touch with your inner child again and have fun. So then like to put it in a word, until now the message that we're getting is go with the flow. And uh, even if you're not very happy at the moment, even if things don't seem to be uh, turning out the way you'd like them to, go with the flow because they will take you to the right place. They will take you, these are just experiences that are taking you to the right place. And here with the king, the king is like putting some hard work into what you're doing. And it's, um, hmm, asking you not to take things for granted. Now, putting some hard work in what you're doing is not that you're not working hard. The thing is, you want a change in your life. And probably you've been in a very comfortable situation until now. 
be it money wise or you know whatever it was or whatever it is you want change but you feel very comfortable and now things are getting uncomfortable and it's actually what you need is that kick you need to get you moving but spirit or the cards in this case um are telling you you know change but be prepared go in the right direction they don't want you to be reckless they don't want you just to change for the sake of change so don't take things for granted what they see what they mean here with hard work is prepare yourself you know don't just throw yourself into the water and learn to swim you know like inform yourself in which direction are you going to swim if you throw yourself into the water what you're going to do afterwards um what are the ver the various techniques of swimming for instance it just as a, a silly example now but it's like be positive celebrate every step you take prepare yourself because you're going to change your life when the time is right when you feel ready it you will change but things is they're like a bit uncomfortable now because it's the, the the universe's way of pushing you forward okay even if uh it feels really uncomfortable and not nice but you need to move forward but you're doing it in your own time and that's okay as well it seems a bit like a paradox but it's not you're going to move forward you're going to change your life now is not the moment to be reckless and um, just prepare and heal heal from anything that may be holding you back or has held you back in the past then as the last card we have fire <laughs> reckless actions lead to conflict yeah And this for me with this fire, it can be in, in with the five of cups, you know, for me, the five of cups is actually the main theme here. Um, is It can be a, 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 a lot of bottled up energy, a lot of bottled up anger. And this may lead to, you know, comments or may lead to actions that won't do you any favors, you know. Um, it can be that's not very easy for you to control this bottled up anger or frustration but if you can turn it into something else can you if you could vent it in a creative way or with sports this would help you you know to get rid of negative energy and clear your mind for any positive inspiration that may be lingering around you but you haven't been able to see it yet so what you need to know is yes there is change yes you have to wait and during this wait prepare yourself and try to make the best uh, out of the situation you're in really work hard to get into that positive vibe okay also like i'm getting the the vibe of fake it till you make it okay and um and remember like your magic within you your your holy connection to the divine and try to rekindle it try to strengthen it because that's what's going to inspire you in a very positive way so pile number one, I hope this made sense to you. I hope this inspires you. And um, if you'd like a private reading, my contact is in the description box below, as well as the link to my Instagram account. And I wish you a wonderful time full of love. Thank you. So if you chose pile number two, this is your reading with the Lemurian crystal. Put it over here so that you know that this is your reading. Okay. So pile number two, what do you need to know? Let's see. First of all, we have the moon. Then we have the three of pentacles. Then we have the Empress. Then we have the Queen of Swords. So 
Pile number two. What I see here is a lot of greatness within you. Much, much greatness. You can achieve great things in this lifetime. And actually, it's like you were born to achieve great things in this lifetime. And because you feel this, because deep inside you know this, there are some fears that come up. Fears of failure, of course. Fear of the responsibility. And uh, maybe even fear of judgment, of uh, being ridiculed or not being supported. Remember, this is a collective reading. Each one of you will have different reasons for this fear. But what's being presented to you is an opportunity of dissolving these fears, of healing them or integrating them and using them in indeed in order to achieve that greatness and you can do this with other people you know could be friends could be co-workers uh, could be you know a group of people that uh, for instance uh, you go to for counseling or or group therapy whatever it is um, this could be very different possibilities but these people will help you to overcome any fears that you may have, any self-doubts or any trauma that you may have experienced. Could be even that there are people that have uh, gone through the same type of experience as you did and, you know, together you can overcome these hurdles. The thing is, it's actually very positive because not only you're not alone, through your journey, you will get the support and you will overcome these fears. You will overcome obstacles and you will achieve this greatness. We have the Empress here and the Empress is greatness herself, right? You will be successful. You will um, be creative. You will be fruitful. <laughs> That's the first word I just got. And um, but there's also a lot of nurturing here. And you will get this nurturing for yourself and you'll be able to nurture others as well. So there's a lot of love. There's a, a lot of care in your life. And if you haven't felt it yet, it will come into your life. So this is what the cards would like you to know. Here with the Queen of Swords. So it may be that these fears actually come from a mother figure okay could even be a man that has like very motherly traits so that's why i speak of mother figure someone that should have been nurturing to you but for some reason failed to do so and this may have left some scars or even uh, self-confidence issues or lack of it right so but also, this also has another message here. It's like healing the inner mother. Oh, this is interesting. I've never... Uh, the concept is really new to me. I'm getting this concept as you are. Really nice. So we're live <laughs> with the spirit world. So healing the inner mother. It, this is quite interesting because we always uh, talk about healing the inner child. But there's also a, a, an inner mother, and this inner mother may be also uh, hurt, you know, not able to express its motherly side. So this could be within you, it could be an aspect of your own actual mother. You know, if your mother has uh, gone through really traumatic experiences in her past, and that made it difficult for her to be that nurturing mother that you needed. So, but you can go and heal, like as you're healing your inner child, you can heal your inner mother. And this is really interesting. I'm going to do this. You know, you go, you can do guided meditations. You can just, you know, visualize, you know, loving or giving your mother or your inner mother the love you wish you had become. This is what I'm getting with images now in my head. And, uh, and this is a healing process, and it's a process that will work for you because 
by healing and strengthening your inner mother, you're strengthening your inner child, you're strengthening your inner adult self as well. Okay? And the other thing is here with the Queen of Swords is actually... I'm getting the word businesswoman, becoming a businesswoman or a business person, right? In the sense of that you can become really clear, really pragmatic, really like fact-based without turning cold. And this is the, the challenge of the um, Queen of Swords is being clear and kind at the same time. And uh, because usually kindness, for instance, let's say we have the, the Queen of Cups, but the Queen of Swords, then it's like her challenge is not just to be, you know, bogged down to cold facts, but keeping the cold facts, but transmitting them in a kind-hearted way, in a loving way. And this is something that you can, because we have the Empress and you have this teamwork here as well. So you are able you know, to get the best of both worlds, being kind-hearted, being nurturing, and being very clear-headed, very clear-minded. And you can think clearly, you can strategize. So what I see here is you becoming a business person, you, you know, setting up a team, you working on a specific project and being successful. And at first, yes, you are afraid, but this is also something you've really dreamed about and you know it's right. Your intuition tells you that it's your calling. You're being called to do it and you will do it. But, you know, stay clear, pragmatic, um, with an open heart, of course, but strategize, you know, like do it step by step. Be prepared. I think this is the main message also here of the Queen of Swords is be prepared. Because luck is opportunity plus preparation. Yeah? Really nice. But you're getting a lot of support. You, you're going to, you, either you're already working or you're going to start working with people that will do you a lot of good. You know, and, uh, and as a team, you will be unstoppable. Really great. Now, let's see what we have here. We have number 19, we have fire. Then we have number 16, we have eagle. And number 26, the hummingbird. Well, what the cards are telling us here, it's okay, yeah. They're saying the time is now. So this is the time to take a leap of faith. This is a time to go for it. And it is a time of decision. It's a time of deciding, do I really want... <laughs> I love like the, the, the example they give in the book for this one. Do you want to be the eagle or the chicken in the coop? <laughs> you have to decide. You know, there's no wrong and right. There's only what is right for you at that given moment. Um, you know, but this is the big opportunity also with the hummingbird. The hummingbird is inviting you into the unknown, is inviting you to go for it. And of course, it's scary here with the moon like we saw earlier. Yes, it can be really scary, but it, this is your destiny. This You are called to be great. You are called to do great things. And now it's the time to do it. That's really amazing. And here with fire, fire has, of course, many meanings, symbolic meanings, but here's also like it can burn away doubts, it can burn away sadness, it can burn away uh, the, the traumatic experiences that you had, some of you probably had in your early life. And um, it's like a healing process here. You embodying your greatness heals any traumatic experience of the past because it brings you to your full potential and all these traumatic experiences that were probably like hindering your progression will just fade away 
Of course, some things stay, some wounds stay, some scars, but it's like you can wear them as a badge, so to say, a victory, like a victory badge saying, I survived, I went through this and I survived. And can also inspire other people to be strong, you know, and uh, jump over their own shadow. So it's all that we're having here is really like jumping over your own shadow is you daring to be great. You're daring to fulfill your destiny. Now, then we have the aspirant, ambition, diligence, and setbacks. Then we have run away. Secrets running from problems. Now, what we have here is really like a decision. And the Queen of Swords is all about decisions, right? Now, you have to take that decision. And also here with the Eagle and the Hummingbird, they're also about decisions. And because they're flying uh, animals, they're birds, so it's also the element of air. And element of air is intelligence, is intellect, is making decisions and being really, really clear. Okay, so, and we have these two decisions here. Either you follow your ambition, either you are so resilient that you can overcome setbacks, right? Or you run away. And I think some of you may be going through this second uh, strategy for a very long time. And, you know, it's not shaming, it's not blaming, uh, putting the blame. No, it's something that we sometimes do when we feel that we're not ready or we're afraid of consequences, positive or negative. So, you know, so it's not about good and bad. It's about things that we decide. And... As we saw earlier with the eagle and the hummingbird, now it's the time to tackle any problem, to tackle any theme or issue head on in order to overcome it. And you have the whole of the potential to overcome it here with the aspirant card. You have the ambition, you have the drive, you have the focus, and you have people around you that will support you. You know, so don't overlook the difficulties, don't overlook the obstacles, like just meet them head on and face them, face your fears here with the moon and, you know, and kind of transcend them, work through them. And this also here, the, the fire symbolic here. So they, you go through that fire, you go through that difficulty, you overcome it and you come out stronger, wiser, because that's also the Queen of Swords. She stands for wisdom and knowledge. And this is who you become. You become a strong, successful, nurturing, creation, creative person. Creation, creative person. That's what's interesting. But I hope you know what I mean, right? You become great. You have that in you. It's just... A question of following up. <laughs> then the last card is the king, authority and diplomacy. So yes, this is who you are. We have the queen, we have here the king. So you are royalty. Pile number two, you are royalty. You are a king, you are a queen. You are an authority. You have that power within you. Okay, maybe some of you uh, may have been afraid of living out that authority in you, but the time has come. Maybe you'll become a boss. Maybe you'll become um, the chief of department. Maybe you are self-employed. Whatever it is, now it's the time to grab that for you because that belongs to you. That's who you are. Yeah, your inner essence is of a queen or a king. Someone is power. Your inner essence is power, pile number two. Funnily enough, pile number one's inner essence was magic, which is also power, but it's different. Yours is power, like power. <laughs> and um, 
you're going to get support. I'm just repeating myself just to put everything again together. Then uh, you are overcoming your fears. You're overcoming obstacles. Um, you're getting support from people around you. You're going to work with a wonderful team. And you're going to achieve that greatness. You just have to decide to say yes to this adventure, to take a leap of faith into the unknown, because it will carry you into your greatness, into your real essence. Okay? So pile number two. This was your reading. I hope it resonates. I hope it inspires you. If you'd like um, a private reading, my contact is in the description box below, as well as the link to my Instagram account. And I wish you a wonderful time full of love. Thank you. So if you chose pile number three, this is your reading. So I put it over here. Now, what do you need to know? Pile number three, let's see. First of all, we have justice. Hmm, trying to put it somewhere. Okay, here. We have justice. Then we have ten of pentacles. We have the six of wands and the world. So the first thing that I get here, pile number three, and I'm going to be very, very specific. So what I mean is that uh, this is not going to be for every one of you. Okay, so this is very specific for some of you. So I'm going to start with that because that's the first thing I got is that if you are involved in um, legal matter, right, um, you're going to win it or you're about to win it. This is about winning a, a, a lawsuit, right, and closing a chapter in closing in the most positive way for you and bringing you money as well. So if there are some legal uh, situations or even financial situations, litigation or whatever it may be, it's going to turn out fine for you. Okay, so. And maybe even at a job, you're getting like promoted or you're getting some money. There's some money coming towards you and it's something that you deserve. It's something that is fear. So this is, again, like I was saying, very, very specific. So let's move on and go into the other possible interpretations here. And what I'm getting here is also, uh, it's like a decision that has to be made. Again, it's a decision. It is a, a, a cycle closing in your life, special here with the Ten of Pentacles and the world. There's a cycle, but it's a happy ending, especially here with the Six of Wands and the Ten of Pentacles. So we have a happy ending coming into your life. And uh, it has been like a very difficult journey especially here with uh, the justice. And not everything you went through was fear, not everything was transparent. And it, it has been very difficult, you know, when dealing probably with other people or certain situations, confronted with certain situations. But the thing is, it's like everything is turning out for the better. You're going to win. You're going to be successful. You're going to get the money, right? Um so there's success, there is fulfillment at the end of the story, so to say, at the end of this chapter, because the story is not over, okay? It's just a chapter. And what I get here is also like the decision that has to be made. And oh, I see, okay. Um, it's a decision about family from some of you. Again, this is going to get a bit uh, specific as well, so bear with me. Um, so it, it involves family matters um, for some of you, and uh, it has to do with letting go. And that could be like direct relatives or even ancestors. There's something here that needs to be let go, to be respected, to be, of course, um, uh, acknowledged 
and needs to be let go. It's like, oh, okay, it's a heritage here. This is, could be, for some of you, something that has gone through many generations. Uh, and it's like uh, a burden. It could be, you know, like that chain, generational chain, uh, something that, you know, keeps happening in every generation to different degrees, okay? And it's passed down. And of course, not voluntarily. It just happens. It's uh, just waiting for that for that one family member that solves it, right? And this could be you. This I know pile number three to hear. This is oh, there's a lot of responsibility. But some of you that are listening to this now are actually clicking with it. You just know, okay, this will end with me. This kind of story. This this uh, generational um, curse, so to say ends with you and it's it's successful so it's you're able to break the chain you're able to stop this from being given further down the generations and the moment you free yourself you're freeing all of your ancestors as well i had no idea this was going to turn in this direction really interesting and um but this is a reason to celebrate it's like it's the end yeah, I'm getting the word again, end of a curse, end of a curse. And uh, it doesn't have to be like a curse curse. It could be just like something, you know, the uh, generational story, you know, a storyline of your family, which, you know, maybe has bogged you down and all the members in a, you know, heavy way. This really heavy, I'm getting like really heavy energy, but you're able to turn this around. It's like your soul took it on itself to stop it in this lifetime. And the thing is, the moment, you know, you'll feel it when it's done because the doors open up to you. What seemed to be really hard, what seemed to never work out or always falling in the same traps, that doesn't happen anymore. It's like the world opens up to you, life opens up to you. And this is going to happen. We have again here the Six of Wands, and the world and the Ten of Pentacles, of course. So there's a lot of success. There's a lot of good times coming your way. Like, really, you're closing a chapter in the most positive way possible. So there's a lot of light. There's a lot of... Uh, yeah, a, f a feeling light, you know, in you, within you. It's like a relief, a sense of relief, of being free, of being able to breathe. It's going to feel amazing. It's like you're feeling reborn, that then you can start living, you know. So in either case, you know, I gave you very specific scenarios here. But in either case, that's the feeling that you'll get, that you can breathe again. You know, you, you can uh, just relax. You, you can... Just be carefree again. And this is a wonderful feeling. And this is coming into your life. Things will become better and very successful. So this is really good news. That's nice. Then we have 51, the staff. Then we have number three, the arrow. And then we have number 22, Ghost Dance. Now, with these cards, I kind of have a confirmation of what we just saw. It's really like, first of all, here with the Ghost Dance, let's start with this one. It's releasing any negative energy that has been passed down from generations. Acknowledging your ancestors, respecting them, praying for them, but releasing that energy. So that confirms that part. And then we have like with the arrow, it's like, what do you really want to do? You know, it's also understanding which path would you like to follow? Who do you want to be? And then staying true to yourself, staying true to your vision, to what you really want. And also like correcting the course of action. 
And this is correcting the course of action, which we have here with the staff and the arrow. It's not really the path itself is also the relationship component that we have with other people and also with our ancestors, for instance, just repeating this ancestor theme here, but it's giving things another try, but in a better way. It's uh, sometimes it's not just cutting people off or, you know, like pretending things didn't happen. It's just either changing a perspective or bringing a healing element to it or, you know, correcting a behavior, for instance, on our part as well. And so here what we have is like, this is being corrected. You are being corrected, not corrected. You are the one correcting, for instance, this generational um, story. You are correcting it. And it's also deciding your path. It's like, if you've been a victim either of a gener generational story or a chain or whatever we want to call it, or you've been going in a direction that hasn't been, you know, bearing fruit and this has been making you more miserable than happy, now it's the time to change this. And with the staff, it tells you, you have the power to do this. You have the power, you know the highs and the lows, you know, the positive and the negative, the shadow and the light, you kind of been in these two uh, poles the whole time. Sometimes the, you're really like in the highs and the very, very positive, and then sometimes you're just in the very lows and the negative. But because you know these two energies so well, you can really navigate through them and find that balance. And again, that's what we have here with the arrow as well, is finding that balance, finding the path that is truly yours. And again, this is then here what's really important for you, pile number three, is finding your own path. Not what other people wanted you to do, not what you think the other people may want from you is what you really want. Staying true to yourself, letting go of any old ghosts that hinder your path, you know, wish them the best, but let them go and start finding who you really are and what you really want. It's the invitation of finding yourself and, uh, start living your own life and you are actually you know your your life is success after success after success but there's a decision that has to be made is also it's a bit similar to pile number two but just a little bit um it's embracing your greatness embracing success embracing who you really are Let's see what the other cards have to say. We have here pathless, difficult decisions, lack of direction. But you're changing this, okay? You're changing this lack of direction. Then we have the patron, mentorship, finances. You know, every path leads you to the right path, meaning that every path is the right path. That was very philosophical, but it's actually true. Even if it's hard to believe, you know, in the real world. But here with the pathless, you know, it's, you may feel sometimes that you lost your way. Again, that's why you have to correct the situation. That's what you're going to do and successfully. But sometimes getting lost only... It just allows you to find a new direction or to find another path in the a new path, a better path to go in the desired direction. And by being pathless, you will find then the person that will support you, that will show you how to get to where you want to be. And this is like material success, okay? And you're going to be successful. You're going to find the right person to lead you to where you want to go. 
and you've been lost. And this reminds me again of this ghost dance, being lost in stories of the past, of just believing that you are not allowed to move forward, but this will change, okay? You are healing from that. There's a lot of healing here. You are healing from that. You are going to move forward and in a very successful way, and you'll be attracting the right people that will help you to do so. And if you don't believe me, I'll show you this. Here, the talisman. You are destined to succeed. <laughs> I love this card. Yeah, and it's true. You are destined to succeed. This is your destiny, right? Is success, material success, money, fame, you name it. You are born to have it. You were born to be successful. And... Uh, you may just feel a bit lost at the time. You may be dealing with setbacks. You may be dealing with uh, some difficulties. But if you stay focused, you can correct the course. You can let go of what you don't need. And the right people will come and help you to find your direction and to get to where you want to be. Wow. So in the other uh, piles, I was talking about the essence so the essence of pile number one is magic. Number two is uh, power. Your essence is success. Yeah. And also justice. I'll, the first time I thought about it, I, I just thought of that card justice because you're correcting, you're ending something, you know, like negative and turning it to positive. But let's say success. It's also beautiful. Okay. So pound number three, this was your reading. I hope it resonates. I hope it inspires you. If you'd like a private reading, my contact is in the description box below, as well as the link to my Instagram account. So I wish you a wonderful time full of love. Thank you.